Hello everyone, this is the third part in my trilogy of random response videos. Now, random response was a way that statisticians used to ask embarrassing questions. And last time I asked you whether you had ever cheated in a test or an exam. We're going to find out how many of you have done this naughty thing. But there is one other thing I want to show you as well, because random response requires you to answer true or false. Now, neither answer is an admission of guilt. But does one of those answers make it more likely? Well, we're going to find out. So last time I asked you to take a coin and to toss it twice. If you got two heads in a row, I wanted you to answer statement one. I have cheated in a test or an exam. If you got anything else, I wanted you to answer statement two. I have never cheated in a test or an exam. Then I showed you this formula. Now the idea of this is the proportion of people who will say true is going to equal to the proportion of people who have cheated and got statement one plus the proportion of people who have not cheated and got statement two. That's all the people who will respond with true. Now, we know that the probability of getting statement one is a quarter. That's the probability of getting two heads in a row. Anything else is going to be three quarters. So the probability of getting statement two is three quarters. We can put that in. But there's one other thing that we can use. The probability of not cheating is going to be one minus the probability of cheating. So we can put that in as well. Now, all we need to do is find out the proportion of people who respond with true. Now, we had over 500 responses to this, but from the first 500 responses, 244 of you said true. That's 244 out of 500. Put that in. Now, all we need to do is rearrange this, and we find out that the proportion of people who have cheated in a test or an exam is equal to 52.5%. You naughty lot, you. Now, I didn't know what the answer was going to be. I thought it was going to be quite low, but I know that some commentators thought that the answer was going to be quite high. And it turns out to be somewhere halfway between, around about 50%. Now, when I did this in my original video, I took a coin, I tossed it twice, and then I responded with false. Now, since statement two is the more likely statement, and statement two is, I have never cheated in a test or an exam, does that mean that when I say false, I am more likely to have cheated in a test or an exam? Is the probability three quarters? Let's find out. Now, when an individual replies with true or false, you're actually giving me some extra information which I can use. Now, the probability of an individual saying false, given that they've cheated, is three quarters. If an individual has cheated sometime in the past, and then they respond with false, well, that means they're answering statement two. And the probability of getting statement two is three quarters. And this is how we write it down. We say the probability of saying false, given that they've cheated with that vertical line, is equal to three quarters. But that's not what we want to know. We actually want to do this the other way around. We want to find out the probability that an individual has cheated given that they've said false. Now, how do we work this out? We use something called Bayes' theorem. Now, Bayes' theorem was discovered by an 18th century English mathematician called Thomas Bayes and a French mathematician called Laplace. And it looks like this. It says the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of B given A times the probability of A divided by the probability of B. In our case, we want to find out the probability that an individual has cheated given that they've said false. And that's equal to the probability that they said false, given that they've cheated, which we now know is three quarters, times the probability that they've cheated, divided by the probability that they will say false. Now, this is what we do. Let's say the probability of cheating is quite low. Let's say it's one in ten. This is the probability for the general population. Now, if we want to find out the probability that an individual has cheated, Given that they've said false, well, we can now use Bayes' theorem, and that turns out to be one quarter. Now, that means that the probability that an individual has cheated, given that they've said false, is now two and a half times more likely than if they had said nothing at all. And for comparison, an individual is seven times more likely to have cheated if they say false than if they say true. 
If the probability of cheating was quite high instead, if it was 9 out of 10, then the probability of cheating given that you've said false and the probability of you cheating given that you've said true doesn't turn out to be much different from 9 out of 10. You don't get a lot of extra information from that. But in reality, we worked out that the probability of cheating was round about a half. So what happens if we use that? Well, if we say that the probability of cheating is a half, then the probability that an individual has cheated given that they've said false turns out to be three times more likely than if they say true. Now, if an individual responds with false, it doesn't mean that they have cheated. The whole idea of random response is a true or false answer is not an admission of guilt because you don't know which statement they're answering. But by saying false, you are giving us some extra information. And in this case, it meant that you were more likely to have cheated. Now, I think I've exhausted random response for now. So, until next time, if you have been, thanks for watching.